All right, so here we have two clips and the angle of the car is super important because you want these two shots to somewhat seamlessly blend together. So I'm gonna pick this point right here in this first clip and I've already done some stabilization on it. So if you do stabilization, you have to make sure to right click on the clip and select new compound clip. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both of these clips. Then with the first compound clip selected, hold down option and drag this up to duplicate the clip. Come up here to the top where it says clip and select freeze frame. Trim the clip down to where the playhead is. With this compound clip selected, select fusion. Hold down command and press C, then hold down command and press V. That'll add a media in one node duplicate. With the new media in one selected, click the polygon tool. Also, I'm gonna turn on my dual viewer because I wanna be able to see my final output and the node that I'm working on. So with this merge node selected, I'm gonna drag it up here, select the polygon node, and then pick a part of the car that you want to start to animate. I'm gonna start with the front wheel. Click around the wheel. And here's a quick tip. If you select all the points that go around something that's rounded, come up here to this little curve option and it will round out all of your points. Then what you wanna do is continue that process. You want to select the media in one and the merge node, hold down command, press C to copy it, then click anywhere in the fusion window, hold down command, press V to paste it, click on the merge node, hold down shift and drag it over the line until it turns blue, let go, and it connects within your node tree. Select the polygon node, connect it to the media in one, the new one that we just made, and pick a different part of the car that we haven't previously masked before. And you wanna repeat this process until you're done masking out every single section of the car that you want to animate. By the way, if you wanna see what you've previously masked, all you have to do is drag in a media from the previous masks that you've done, just to double check that you get every single section of the car. Okay, so once you're done, you should basically have a giant line of all of these layers that you've masked out. I actually tried to go in and add camera shake, which is a built-in of macro that DaVinci has, but it's so time consuming and annoying. So I actually made a little macro tool for you guys to download. It's linked down in the description. And once you download it, go ahead and drag it into the node viewer in Fusion. Hold down shift and drag it under the first layer. You can kind of see what it's gonna be doing with each layer. So what I highly suggest is pick the speed and the shake amount and everything, including turning on motion blur. Turn it up all the way to 10. And just for the time being, right click here and select motion blur to turn it off so it's not playing while we're working in the fusion window. Just remember, we have to turn it back on once we leave here. So I'm just gonna turn down the shake speed just a tiny amount. Once you get your settings the way you like it, you can copy and paste this in between every single layer that we just masked out. Now, for some reason, there's kind of like a glitch right now where this doesn't show that it's connected. It's connected, it's just really odd that it doesn't show that. With that said, every single time you add this macro to these layers, you wanna make sure you come up here and adjust the shake randomize. You can just move the amount a tiny amount every single time you copy and paste it, and it makes a huge difference. Go ahead and add the macro in between every layer. All right, so once you're done, you should have something that's animating like this. But now we have to get rid of the background of the car. So come back here to the edit tab. Scroll to the point of when the compound clip starts. Deactivate it by pushing D on the keyboard. Go over to the color tab, right click on the frame and select grab still. With that new still created in our still gallery, right click on it and select export and export it into the folder of your project or wherever you wanna access it. Now you can use Dolly, which is free, or I'm just gonna use Photoshop real quick. These both can do the exact same thing that we're trying to do right now. Go ahead and drag the TIFF file that we just created into whatever you're using. Then what I'm gonna do is select the vehicle, select generative fill, type in remove car. Select the one that looks the most legitimate, select file, select export, click save for web, select original and save it to the folder where you want to access this later. Exit Photoshop. Then in the edit tab, turn the compound clip back on and select fusion. Come over here to the very beginning of our node tree. And let's just go ahead and add one more merge node and then drag the export that we just did getting rid of the car. Connect it to that merge node. So now what I'm gonna do is drag my playhead up until the car kind of expands almost all the way. And I'm going to start turning off layers. So I'm gonna go through the merge nodes, 
click on the first merge node, come up here to the right hand side under the settings, select a keyframe, go one frame forward, and turn it off. Then I'm going to go over to another merge node, move maybe one frame forward, two frames forward, select the next merge node, come back up here to the right hand side, select a keyframe, move one frame forward, I'm using the keys on the keyboard, and then turn the blend all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing for every single layer here. You can also randomize it, so whatever you want to do, depending on where you, how you mask the car, will kind of determine where the pieces disappear. You want to kind of have them all kind of turn off basically halfway towards the end of the clip. There's something missing. We need the exoskeleton of the car. So if you come over here to envatoelements.com, this is actually the sponsor of this video. So thank you guys so much for sponsoring. And I love this website because honestly, I use it whenever I have like I need this type of asset for my projects. So check this out. If you come up here to the main page of elements, type in car chassis. Now, what I love about this is that they have 3D renders that you can download. And say if you want to pick a car frame that has no wheels and it just kind of, I think this is the one that I used. You can select the 3D render, select view 3D render. And this is what is so sick. You can click and drag and rotate it and then download the angle that you want. So I think I downloaded like this one right here. All you have to do is select download this angle. Not only do they have this, but they've got video templates for DaVinci Resolve, music, sound effects, graphic templates, so many things that you guys can use, not only to speed up your process of getting your projects done, but getting your clients to be extremely happy with the end results using these incredible assets. So once you've downloaded the exoskeleton, you can drag it in from your downloads folder, or if it's in your media pool, whatever you need to do, go ahead and just drag it in here like so. Let's go ahead and add another merge node and connect it with the media in right like that. With the media in selected, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform. We're going to adjust the size of it. And we're also going to add some color correction. So hold down shift and press spacebar and type in color and add a color corrector. All I'm going to do is really turn down the gain so it's not so bright. And if you want, you can add you know, some color tint to it or whatever you'd like, maybe even turn the gamma down a little bit so it doesn't look too crazy. And then now you have this exoskeleton underneath the car when it transforms. All right, so don't forget, we have to turn our motion blur back on. So right click up here, select motion blur. Let's go back to the edit tab. Now for the next clip, hold down option and drag it up just like we did before. Come up here, select clip, and then select freeze frame. Then I'm gonna trim the clip down just a little bit like this then click on Fusion. Repeat that entire process for this vehicle. Once you completed that process for this next car, what you'll wanna do is come to the very beginning of your node tree where you see the media in one, hold down Shift and press Spacebar and type in Background. Add a background node. Connect the background node to the media in one. With the background node selected, turn the alpha all the way down. Then that way, we should have just the layers of the car separating. Then come back to the edit tab, right click on that clip and select change clip speed. Select reverse speed. Now the car kind of comes out of nowhere. Disable the clip that we just worked on. Come to this compound clip, select color, grab a still and repeat the process of removing the car from the background. Go ahead and drag in the frame with the removed vehicle. Open it up and it only needs to be about a second long. Doesn't need to be very long. Right click on that clip, select new fusion clip, go into fusion. Add a merge node, copy the media in one, connect it to the merge node. Add a polygon mask, and let's go ahead and make this super simple. You can divide this up as many times as you want. I'm going to just kind of divide this into thirds. Click that. Highlight both these layers. Copy and paste the merge node in the media node. I'm actually going to copy the polygon mask this time. Connect it to the new media in one. And with that polygon selected, I'm going to select all the points on this side and move it over to this side like that. I'm going to then select the media in one here, add a polygon mask, select the polygon and invert it. And I'm just going to basically select around the fence line, big straight edge like so. Then click invert again. Drag the media out into the viewer window with the media in one selected, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in DVE. 
I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and move the pivot point up to the top of the frame, which should be one on the Y axis. With the playhead at the very beginning of the clip, I'm going to select the keyframe of the X axis and pull it all the way up until it's out of frame. I'm going to scroll my playhead all the way to the end, select the keyframe for the X again, and then bring this down until I hit zero. So now we have an animation of this flopping in. Repeat the process for these next two layers. So let's go ahead and add a DVE for each one of these and animate it to the way that we want. Make sure to move the pivot to the point of where you want to animate. And now we have a folding in animation like that. With each DVE node, make sure to come up here to the right hand side under the settings and select motion blur and turn it on. Do that for every DVE node. Okay, so now this is where we get to kind of piece everything together. Disable the compound clips underneath and drag this first compound clip up until it blends over with this clip here. Let's go ahead and move this clip up a little bit more, the transforming Tesla, and move in our freeze-framed background to kind of go underneath like this. Trim the first clip in case it runs a little long. Make sure to re-enable the Tesla clip that is moving. And that is how you can do the transformer effect.